Hello guys, I hope you can um, hear me. I'm just going to check all the, the the software parts. I'm going to make sure that the streaming is set properly. The audio is getting captured clearly. The audio input should be on. I'm um, just doing, going to do a, as usual. Typically, I'm going to do the sound check and volume check and, and visual check, all of that. There's, there's no echo or some sound repeating, any of that. Uh, please do send me your thoughts. Please tell me whether... Um, whether this is working fine if the visual is fine and the volume is fine you can hear me clearly and the check is fine then we'll jump in and start doing this that's just fine so if we have if we have time and if you are um, if you have the bandwidth and inclination and there are some questions at the end of it then we will do uh, one round of uh, chat with uh, with comments in place but first up let's finish off what we had in, in mind which is reading comprehension it was a wonderful set of passages as ever actual cat passages and the passages are available in the description. Go check out that um, link. You should be able to get that. As ever, stay safe. I think we are, we are not even close to being out of the woods. Uh, we've had a... Uh, some of some countries have had a second spike. We have not even gone on a decline. I think we might have just deferred the peak. And we're not really flattening it. I think Chennai especially is, is continuing to be worrisome. So too is... So to our parts of Maharashtra, and so few, few. in these places, good. Be kind, be kind to people left, right, and center. Understand that everybody is having some supply chain disruptions throughout. We guys are struggling with it. So we have, we have pulled our uh, study material package. So we we do we do online courses. I told anybody who buys our online course, they can pick up our study material later on once the, once the restrictions are completely lifted but every day we try to ship some stuff but so many addresses and pin codes are still restricted that we simply can't reach some places and so these are things that we need to be considerate towards our india post and amazon and blue darts of the world uh, please extend that courtesy be please please be kind to anyone who's struggling with some some supply chain logistics and the rest of it and wonderful guys i'm uh, i'm going to jump in and volume is slightly low so i'm going to uh, start speaking louder i think that should fix it keep the mic closer that should also help i'm going to jump in and uh, do a change setting push myself to a corner and do a display capture and then uh, run with this and i hope you can now see me in the corner and see me whether to in a way it's functioning i'm going to check whether everything is fine online with my team so that they, they will send me something saying whether something is not all right so i'm going to again once you've changed the setting i'm going to sp keep speaking and just be there for about about one two minutes and once we know that things are fine and this is set and things are fine then i'll start shooting and, and start looking at the uh, display screen and looking at the uh, reading comprehension part and the rest of it and so we're going to do three rc passage at least hoping to do three uh, three lovely passages from um, all from cat 2018 uh, beautiful fun to read passages as always cat uh, quite possibly picks the best and most fun passages to to read it is always pleasant to read they add something to uh, some flavor to you you get to know something so they surprise you with something somewhere and so that's always been uh, a feature of the cat and, um, and they've retained it thank god for that cat rc passages are, are rarely boring so if you're doing a mock cat you're going getting bored stiff with the rc passages you're clearly doing the wrong set of rc passages and so um, I, I hope the display screen share thing is coming on i'm just going to check that because i'm not able to see the screen uh, I'm just going to check with the team whether the display is seen because I'm not able to check that out online so I'm just going to check this offline with the team so that uh, I think I'm sharing a screen which has uh, the entire passage I hope you guys are able to see the screen so I'm just going to check that and once I get confirmation on that once we know that that's happening then we'll jump in and uh, uh, and, and carry on with this let me just check this on the platform as well Okay, something was indeed missing. So I'm getting a message. Can I display screen? Sorry, I'm not. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I think the display screen uh, button was not pressed clearly. Uh, human error. My mistake. The software indeed was doing its job. I didn't click it properly. So I, I can't even blame anybody else. Damn, one of those occasions. Anyway, uh, all good now. I think that the screen should be shared. You should be able to see this. 
are quite characteristic. As ever, I'm going to read this nice and slow. Uh, very interesting passage and very uh, uh, jargon-filled. So it's not easy to, to read, which is the fun part of it. Fine. When researchers at Emory University in Atlanta trained mice to fear the smell of almonds, or almonds, they found to their consternation, and they, they paired it with electric shocks, to their consternation that both the children and grandchildren of these mice were spontaneously afraid of the same smell. Very interesting. This is not supposed to happen. Generations of school children have been taught that the inheritance of acquired characteristics is impossible. A mouse should not be born with something its parents have learned during their lifetimes. Any more than a mouse loses its tail in an accident should give birth to tailless mice. Oh, brilliant. The analogy is brilliant. He's basically saying uh, the, the whole idea of evolution or, 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 or inheriting something or, or going through some characteristics. He, 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 the whatever message is going from generation to generation, <laughs> stimulus-led thing, what a parent has learnt, that stimulus should not be stored and transferred to the next generation. An interesting idea, interesting idea. Let's read more. Modern evolutionary biology dates back to a synthesis that emerged around 1940s and 60s, which married Charles Darwin's mechanism of natural selection with Gregor Mendel's discoveries of how genes are inherited. The traditional and still dominant view is that adaptations from the human brain to the peacock's tail are fully and satisfactorily explained by natural selection and subsequent inheritance. Yet, new evidence from genomics, epigenetics and developmental biology indicate that evolution is more complex than we once assumed. So I don't know these terms. Genomics, epigenetics and developmental biology. And so lots of jargon, lots of terms. Natural selection we know, which is basically how man evolved from monkey and we came from uh, the sea, and slowly became more and more complicated species with finally man the, at the apex of the evolutionary chain. And, uh, what uh, uh, with with this this theory has been tied in and so uh, adaptations are fully and satisfactorily explained by natural selection and subsequent inheritance and how genes are inherited so th there is some codified information that happens possibly over millennia and then tweaks happen in the genetic code to address uh, environmental changes so natural selection happens one type of gene get spiked more and more another type get, is pushed out faded out and then characteristics are acquired so you cannot say uh, in a generation one particular train gets trait gets picked up whereas the previous experiment with mice there's been a trait that has been picked up in a generation that is clearly not natural selection nor is it allied to this Gregor Mendel theory of how, how genes are inherited? Fine. So very often, uh, not very often, almost always, natural selection is a process that is not explained in any one uh, set of generations. And so from monkey came man. How, when? Over many ten thousands of years. And so it's not from a monkey gave birth to a man. And whereas this seems to be suggesting something else. Okay. Let's go to the third paragraph. In his book on human nature, 1978, the evolutionary biologist Edward O. Wilson claimed that human culture is held on a genetic leash. The metaphor needs revision. Let's see what the metaphor is. Imagine a dog walker, the genes, struggling to retain control of a brawny mastiff. Human culture, the pair's trajectory, reflects the outcome of the struggle. Now imagine the same dog walker struggling with multiple dogs on leashes of varied lengths, with each dog tugging in different direction. All these tugs represent the influence of developmental factors, including epigenetics, antibodies and hormones passed on by, by parents, as well as the ecological legacies and culture they bequeath. Basically saying, natural selection and genes and that process is the starting point. That's what the dog walker has. And then there, is, there are several struggles. So some cultural, some or, or the, the, the culture, the ecological culture, not the culture that we know of. Antibodies and hormones and, and all of these factors from through the different the dogs pushing and pulling on their own. The path the man and the dog take are going to be a function of where the, the dog walker wants to go and how the dogs pull him, how the genes govern and how 
the inherited structures from the genes from whatever the the, the different strands that dogs take how they affect the gene itself historically traditionally the traditional view was the the inherited ideas are genetic based on natural selection we have never thought that some inherited characteristic could happen over a generation so this is something new I mean, let's read let's read this more further down the received wisdom is that parental experiences can't affect the characters of their offspring yes a very interesting point it says that look if if i am i don't uh, i get worried when i see uh, mathematical questions because my sixth standard teacher used to thwack me every time i made a mistake i would expect my son to be not worried about math and this kind of cultural psychological uh, conditioning that's happening because of an external stimulus that can't possibly get transferred to the offspring whereas the mouse experiment is saying something dramatically different and therefore on natural selection on genetic inheritance sit a bunch of new ideas let's see them except they do that is characters are affected the way the genes are expressed to produce an organism's phenotype the actual characteristics it ends up with is affected by chemicals that attach to them wonderful everything from diet to air pollution to parental behavior can influence the addition or removal of these chemical marks so when my when my sixth standard teacher thwacks me there is a there is a chemical that links me with a phobia to math and then that goes and attaches itself to the genes La- hopefully they should get weeded out when i'm having children otherwise whatever weakness i have they will inherit i don't want that fine so let's see this further uh, the, the additional removal of these chemical marks which switches genes on or off usually these so called epigenetic attachments are removed during the production of sperm and egg cells brilliant epigenetic is not inherited but some addition additional chemical thing due to stimulus are removed during the production yeah that's natural that's to be understandable my phobias should not be inherited my the species phobias can be but mine should not be but it turns out that some escape the resetting process and are passed on to the next generation along with the genes that's why this epigenetic addition is sitting on top of the gen- gene pool this is known as epigenetic inheritance and more and more studies are confirming that it really happens i'm not really happy with this why i'm not really happy with this from a, from a social point of view uh, the poor inherit a set of things because of social conditioning the way they think their minds uh, they struggle with an open canvas they don't see the world the way the middle class or the rich see it would be a shame if their ch- children inherited not just their wealth but also their world view it looks like that's also happening so in which case we need to put more fight to make sure that our poor are not continue to be poor let's return to the almond fearing mice the inheritance of an epigenetic mark transmitted in the sperm is what led the mice's offspring to acquire an inherited fear so the the fear creates a chemical that goes and attaches itself to the genes which should get weeded off but it some of them don't this is one of those epigenetic attachment that does not get weeded off with when the sperm and egg cells are created and therefore it is transmitted epigenetics is only part of the story through culture and society humans and other animals inherit knowledge and skills skills acquired by their parents all this complexity points to an evolutionary process in which genomes over over hundreds or to thousands of generations epigenetic modi- modification and inherited cultural factors over several perhaps tens or hundreds of generation and parental effects over single generation time spans collectively inform how organisms adapt parental influence i can understand but parental genetic markers that's a little unusual so it's 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 the the, the, the genomes which are like long term which is where which which explains natural selection and, evolu- and evolution epigenetic modifications which is more short term and parental effects these extra genetic kinds of inheritance give organisms the flexibility to make rapid adjustment to environmental challenges dragging genetic change in their wake much like a rowdy pack of dogs he's saying the long term thing the medium term thing and the short term thing due to different several factors historically we were thinking only the long term things matter but these also matter and the mouse experiment has been a pivotal turning point in 
probably the scientific community accepting that something like this can happen it's one of those surprising results we do did not expect that children and grandchildren to inherit the fear of amens the fact that going near amens is given the electric shock has not just had an impact in this but has also had a chemical impact attaching to the gene which refuses to go away as well right wonderful let's get the complex the passage is complex lots of jargon lots of names lots of studies and some, some, some many different strands of ideas thrown together hopefully the questions will not be that difficult maybe they will be thrown as well let's see the passage uses the metaphor of a dog walker to argue that evolutionary adaptation is most comprehensively understood as being determined by genetic epigenetic developmental factors and ecological legacies when well, let's go to this the dog walker analogy genes are there they're definitely genetic and so it still says there's a dominant view and so genes are the dominant they play the genetic transformation is a dominant view no doubt about it and so gene genetics has to be there in the answer that is there that's a given that's the dog walker he's struggling with so many dogs and all that but the dog walker is clue cool is crucial all these tags present the influence of developmental factors including epigenetics antibodies and hormones and ecological legacies and culture so definitely looking for genetics i'm also looking for epigenetic we're also looking for ecological legacies and so genetic epigenetic developmental factors ecological legacies i think a looks very juicy uh, b is socio cultural let's not talk of this and when, when when cultural is talking about it's about the, the 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 genomic culture not not what we see is drama and play and theater it's not being dwelled upon this one genetic extra genetic there's no extra genetic the term used here is epigenetic this also can be ruled out extra genetic genetic epigenetic no choice a uh, interestingly this question is not that difficult because all of these phrases are mentioned here the genes developmental factors epigenetics ecological legacies they are just explicitly stated so choice a it is which of the following options best describes the author's argument darwin's theory of natural selection cannot fully explain evolution true on top of this natural selection there is a there is a layer of genetic inheritance that this next guy has added but that is the dominant view but sitting on top of that is the idea that epigenetics and developmental factors and cultural factors are all playing a role right so uh, several ideas are being done so natural selection is not does not fully that is true maybe something else would be better than this and mental theory of inheritance is unfairly underestimated in explaining evolution no it's not necessary he's saying uh, men, natural selection and gregor mendel this forms the dominant view we're not underestimating we've accepted it that's the mainstream so this is not right practically saying darwin and mendel wrote the book effectively on how we viewed this what you're seeing now is another layer to it so that's not the right answer darwin's and mendel's theories together best explain evolution this is the dominant view but that is not the author's argument author is saying okay this is the dominant view they form the bedrock on top of it several nuances have now been observed and proven so we need to take that on board so this is not the author's argument wilson's theory of evolution is scientifically superior to either darwin's or mendel's no darwin is the god in this darwin wrote natural selection the idea and still that is the mainstream that is the natural thing they are now saying beyond that there could be two other things and so there's not there's no talk of something being superior or inferior to anything else and choice a it is the emory university experiment with mice points to the inheritance of acquired characteristics yes of course fear of amens is an acquired characteristic psychological markers possibly i have to think about this but i don't know whether it's explicitly mentioned this is clear personality traits no we're talking about sudden fear sudden phobia some acquired characteristic not whether you have a flair for public speaking acquired parental fears no acquired characteristics is a better expression than acquired parental fears it's not it's not narrowing the discussion down to fears the, due to some stimulus 
the parent is acquiring a characteristic that is laid down so i'm going to read this passage again that bit alone they found to their consternation spontaneously afraid of the same smell smell of almonds have been taught that inheritance of acquired characteristics is impossible an acquired characteristics inheritance clear the phrase is being used inheritance of acquired characteristics choice a which is the following if found to be true would negate the main message of the passage a study indicating the primacy of ecological impact on human adaptation i don't know ecological impact i don't know if this is being even, even referred to not relevant at least let us let us come back to this a study highlighting the criticality of epigenetic inheritance to evolution uh, that would that would reinforce the author's message author is saying look it's not just natural selection and genetic inheritance its epigenetic factors also play a role so if a study highlighting this then would reinforce that would reinforce this not negate a study affirming the sole influence of natural selection and inheritance evolution this is our answer the author's entire passage is natural selection and inheritance darwin and mendel they have given us almost everything we have not 90% of what we need to do we thought it was 100% hey tell you what there is something more than that we are going to discuss that so there is a study and performing this is a sole influence then that will negate the main message of the passage the main message is so oh, this is darwin and mendel are brilliant but tell you what new research is saying there's something else also so c would negate that a study affirming the influence of socio cultural markers on evolutionary processes this will either reinforce that something else is there or or, or, or add some more meat to the idea that there is something yet to be still discovered but it's not going to negate what is there choice c it is and a wonderful wonderful passage fairly difficult one as well go on to the next one this is again challenging wonderful just give it i'm going to give you a minute to just grab your thoughts i'm going to see there are uh, comments and discussions going on here and see i'm just going to have a one look and then we'll come back to the passage wonderful meritocracy i like this passage fine so it's an interesting passage the complexity of modern problems often precludes any one person from fully understanding them tell me about it but are we all claim that we have the best understanding of the situation so it's beautifully seen in the pandemic that nobody can understand the biology of it the medicine of it the epidom epidemiology of it the political response of it the social angle of it the media outrage of it but each one of us is an expert in each of in everything put together anyway factors contributing to rising obesity levels for example include transportation systems and infrastructure media convenience foods changing social norms human biology and psychological factors of course the multidimensional or layered character of complex problems also undermines the principle of meritocracy that's weird why would it let's read this the idea that the best person should be hired why would why does it undermine this there is no best person i don't get it let's read further when putting together an oncological research team a biotech company such as gilead or great genentech would not construct a multiple choice test and hire the top scorers of course not or hire people whose resumes score highest according to some performance criteria instead they would seek diversity oh that old animal they would build a team of people who bring diverse knowledge bases tools and analytic skills all good all good so far i don't understand why it still undermines the principle of meritocracy when merit and diversity are not opposing ideas they are not opposites i can have a diverse very meritocratic team so I, I personally i still have peeps with this passage i want to see if it redeems itself let's see believers in a meritocracy might grant that teams ought to be diverse but then argue that meritocratic principle should apply within each category us truly if you need to have a scientist and a mathematician and a sports person we should get the best of these three and then put them together provided they also work well with each other that's important that the team should consist of the best mathematicians the best oncologists and the best biotech statisticians from within the pool they seem to be ratifying this but i see a but coming that position suffers from a similar flaw what is that flaw 
even within a, even with a knowledge domain no test or criteria applied to individuals will produce the best team each of these domains possesses such depth and breadth that no test can exist of course no test can exist that doesn't mean tests are insufficient fine so i still have issues with this passage but let's keep reading consider the field of neuroscience upwards of 50000 papers were published last year covering various techniques domains of inquiry and levels of analysis ranging from molecules and synapses up through networks of neurons given that complexity any attempt to rank a collection of neuroscientists from best to worst as if they were competitors in the 50 meter butterfly must fail correct it will fly the complexity in pre- present era is too high fine what could be true is that a given a specific task and composition of a particular team one scientist would be more likely to contribute than another definitely optimal hiring depends on context optimal teams will be diverse all okay still it's like saying look if you are if you are a football team and you have the best forward line then when you are looking at the transfer market you should get midfielders and defenders of course of course you can't keep recruiting 12 forwards and expect the team to be brilliant it won't be the forward does his job so too is a wonderful midfielder a defensive shield and a wing back and a great goalkeeper so your team needs to have balance which is which is a proxy for uh, diversity that's being said here your hiring and buying and transfer market dealing are, have to be based on context what do you need and how the two can work together i cannot have two number 9s who are both happy playing on their own then even within the forward line i need to have not just a strong forward line but i need to have guys who can work well together all that is good the one thing that i still have an issue with none of this none of this says merit is useless and right? these are other factors but i don't understand why this 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 passage is taking a bludgeon and beating up merit with it and right? believers in meritocracy it, they mean good things the really strong good interesting beautiful forward can work with multiple other people that's part of an inherent trait of defining merit anyway let's not get digress di- di- let's not digress let's read this evidence for this claim can be seen in the way that papers and patents that combine diverse ideas tend to rank as high impact of course it can also be found in the structure of the so called random decision forest a state of the art machine learning algorithm a random forest consists of ensembles of decision trees if classifying pictures each tree makes a vote is that a picture of a fox or a dog a weighted majority rules random forest can serve many ends they can identify bank fraud and diseases recommend ceiling fans and predict online dating behavior when building a forest you do not select the best trees as they tend to make similar classifications you want diversity programmers achieve that diversity by training each tree on different data a technique known as bagging they also boost the forest cognitively by training trees on the hardest cases those that the current forest gets wrong this ensures even more diversity and accurate for forest all good if i had read this in a passage i'll be chomping at the bits and writing off comments there are lots of arguments made for diversity and richness and variety and not having heavy correlation all good but taking each of this as a blow against quality i'm not on board with it personally and you do not select the best trees as they tend to make similar classifications you do not tend to select the trees with the highest correlation and so programmers achieving achieve the diversity by training each tree on different data brilliant of course you have to they also boost the forest cognitively by training trees on the hardest cases why would you want to train on the hardest cases because your quality should be better you want better trees what do you mean by better meritocratic none of i don't agree with the premise of the passage that merit is not important all other factors being important i'm on board when the factors take the author is taking each of those to drive this illogical argument that merit is useless or merit is misleading or merit is not required each of these says other factors are also there but i don't see how any of these arguments suggest that merit is not necessary fine so but that again my personal opinion i'm going to keep it aside completely jump with the author's opinion say author zindabad and answer the questions yet the fallacy of meritocracy persists corporations non profit governments universities and even preschools test score and hire the best 
this all but guarantees not creating the best team ranking people by common criteria produces homogeneity that not likely to lead to breakthroughs personally individually i think this is the, the one of the more absurd conclusions made one of the one of the madness of some elements of the diversity brigade they do this the fallacy of meritocracy there's no such thing i would want you to run a company where you recruit on the basis of diversity without caring about merit chances are you'll go from a corporation to non profit very quickly you can't make money and try try working with diverse stupid people i'm using stupid to make a point merit can't be sacrificed merit is not the defining criteria merit is not the only criteria having a multiple choice exam and taking that as a proxy for merit of all quality that is wrong having only one criteria to define merit in your way that is wrong but true merit can shine through including all this complexity fine so so if, if you are putting the world's best level and you will include virat kohli and sachin tendulkar you can't say i i will go for diversity fine so i i i, I completely disagree with the premise that there is a fallacy of meritocracy you can say merit does not drive everything diversity matters that's not what this passage is trying to say this passage is trying to say that chasing merit is perhaps just wrong chasing merit at the cost of diversity at least there's some argument to be made fine right? so but as i said i'm going to keep aside all my prejudices my judgments my view of what this is aside now i'm completely on board with the author merit is overrated diversity rules let's answer the questions now which of the following conditions if true would invalidate the passage's main argument if assessment tests were made more extensive and rigorous chances are the author would not agree any way the cha- author is saying merit itself no matter how you assess it is not that important he's not even saying merit is assessed inefficiently he's saying merit is assessed inefficiently but even otherwise merit is not so important if top scorers possess multidisciplinary knowledge that enable them to look at a problem from several perspectives oops i would have written this choice this is my biggest crib the guys with the best quality are usually the guys who have the ability to think of diverse opinions i found quality to be a far better barometer of the depth and value than diversity for the heck of it and so anything that sacrifices so i have seen uh, so called hardcore bare knuckled completely quant driven engineers be able to isolate a, a, a human interaction problem far better then scores of um, sociology majors with that guy for all his math by upbringing has the ability is picked up that ability to look at different perspectives because of the extent to which he has had to look at different perspectives even in maths fine so multidisciplinary knowledge and, and high iq being able to look at it from different views that's crucial so i i like that choice but let's see c and d as well if it were proven that teams characterized by diversity end up being conflicted about problems and take a long time to arrive at a solution that is true but our author is not just championing diversity he is landing blow after blow on meritocracy so c says diversity could end up causing some trouble good but b says meritocracy merit the guy who knows his stuff will think differently so c is also good but b probably shades it if a new machine learning algorithm were developed that proved to be more effective than the random decision for us even if you know more effective how more effective does it sacrifice diversity and favor merit that part we need to uh, still still do so i would b and c both fit the bill but b is better the author critics meritocracy for all the following reasons except that modern problems are multifaceted and required varied skill sets to be solved to author says this you can't have six guys at the same type to solve all problems diversity and context specificity are important for taking making major advances in any field true criteria designed to assess merit are insufficient to take expertise in any field of knowledge true i won't say any field of knowledge i don't like that in complex fields yes an ideal team comprises the best individuals from diverse fields of knowledge this is the answer why because the word best because the author clearly says this this one wonderful sentence that i uh, thus the team should consist the best mathematicians 
the best oncologist and the best biostatisticians that position suffers from a similar flaw he doesn't think having the best of each is sufficient or is necessary and so this word makes this the, the thing that the author is not saying mind so that word best which of the following conditions would weaken the efficacy of a random decision for us if a large number of decision trees in the ensemble were trained on data derived from easy cases this would weaken definitely because you want to train them on hard cases only then they'll become better they'll weed out some form of natural selection will happen and the better decision trees will emerge from that so this will definitely weaken let's see the others if a large number of decision trees in the ensemble were trained on data derived from easy and hard ones that will help if the types of ensemble of decision trees in the forest were doubled this will also help if the types of decision trees in each ensemble of the forest were doubled types of ensembles were doubled types of trees in each ensemble were doubled both will help i have many teams that will help i have many people in each team that will also help easy and hard cases that will help easy cases alone that won't help then they are, they might not have the 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 strength in them to tackle the harder cases so answer choice a on the basis of the passage which of the following teams is likely to be the most effective in solving the problem of rising obesity levels we need people from several fields not necessarily the best in each field a author likes diversity and has a bone to pick against merit so you can't just say we want the best in each of these the author will get all worked up right so you have to say we need many people from many streams many divisions but you're not really chasing the best and a team comprised of nutritionist psychologists urban planners and media personnel who have each scored a distinction in their respective test all right but not really all right the first part is brilliant is covering the range if scored a distinction that is they are the best in their rep- the author doesn't want it a team comprised of nutritionists psychologists urban planners and media personnel who have each performed well in their respective subject test and so maybe this will go far because the author is steadfastly against merit a specialized team of nutritionists from various countries who are also trained in the machine learning algorithm of random decision for na that's just an analogy a specialized team of top nutritionists from various countries who also possess some knowledge of psychology not what the author is saying author wants different people a team which brings everything to the table fine so i would have gone for type choice a distinction is better than performed well why would you leave something on the table but i think the author is going to go for uh, on the basis of the passage that be choice b fine is so i keep aside my preferences and we'll come back to this which of the following best describes the purpose of the example of neuroscience why was neuroscience mentioned is it yeah there are so many different people how can you rank them in modern world everything is so complex Right. Let's look at the choices. In the modern age, every field of knowledge is so vast that a meaningful assessment of merit is impossible. I think we found our answer. He's saying justice. He gives so many different strands of discussion on neuroscience and says this is there, that is there, this is there. How can you rank them from one to ten? That's what he's trying to drive a parallel. You can't just rank them on any basis, and that is why he uses the example of neuroscience. unlike other fields of neuro knowledge neuroscience is an exceptionally complex field he's not making that point he's making the exact opposite point he's taking neuroscience as an example to say how everything is so complex in narrow fields of knowledge a meaningful assessment of expertise has always been possible not the point it might even be true but it's not that is not why neuroscience is mentioned neuroscience is an advanced field of science because of its connections with other branches of science like oncology and biostatistics nothing this is my this is talking about neuroscience we're talking we're talking about why is neuroscience an example is using neuroscience an example to say it is these days it is not that easy to just rank people from 1 to 10 in whatever field they are doing because each field is so complex and that is choice a right wonderful passage interesting passage a passage where i had to keep aside my own opinions i can pl- almost disagreed with everything that the other said I agree with not everything, but the core premise. I agree with that diversity is important. I agree that 
uh, how they work with each other is important i agree that you have to keep your context important when you are recruiting but i simply don't understand how any and all of these mean that merit is not important i'm building a team i need to a cricket team or a football team i need a good center forward a playmaker two strong midfielders a defensive shield wonderful defenders and two wing backs and a goalkeeper i need 11 different players for different roles so i need diversity point taken i need my team to gel so i know that i can get three great forwards but if all of them are guys who play in the d they're going to tread on each other's toes and i'm going to be a mess elsewhere so not only should my guys be good they should know their role and be well able to play nice all that i agree but just because all these are important doesn't mean i'll get crap players and they can suddenly do a great job they can't i still want great players i have to find a mechanism of assessing and finding that great maybe just taking some statistical metric is insufficient i'll even concede to that not everybody can be uh, evaluated based on an entrance exam of course not who's saying that fine but but the therefore saying merit itself is a idea to be binned i'm not a fan of that and so anyway luckily i don't know the author otherwise i would have been going picking an argument with him and beating him up not physically but but beating up on his ideas anyway let's go to the next one white lipped grove snails give it a read at least start this process gather your thoughts we'll jump in meanwhile i'm going to just look at the comment things and see if there are no issues yep there are no issues grove snails as a whole are distributed all over europe i don't even know what what grove snails are i think they're some species some some creature but a specific variety of the snail with a distinctive white lipped shell is found exclusively in ireland and in the pyrenees mountains that lie on the border between france and spain the researchers sampled a total of 423 snail specimens from 36 sites distributed across europe with an emphasis on gathering large numbers of the white lipped variety when they sequence genes from mitochondrial dna of each of these snails we're getting so many passages today from dna and all that um, each of these snails and used algorithms to analyze the genetic diversity between them they found that a distinct lineage the snails with the white lip shells was indeed endemic to the two very specific and distant places in question oh brilliant this is the kind of um, history and biology combined thing that i like so what are you saying is this europe lots of snails in lots of places fine there's one in this corner one in this corner one is uh, ireland and there is border between france and spain both of them have this white lipped variety not just that they're both from a distinct lineage so it's like twins separated at birth in one of those are old hindi or tamil movies so there is some back story to this it is very surprising that we have found this obviously the rest of the par- uh, the passage is going to put some hypothesis about the back story this is effect this is something like uh, twins separated at birth two people looking exactly like each other one in delhi and one in chennai and suddenly after all our research we one, we see both of them and then we are like stunned now we got to figure out how they are there that's a stage explaining this is tricky obviously previously some had speculated that the strange distributions of creatures such as the white lipped grove snails could be explained by convergent evolution in which two populations evolved the same trait by coincidence possible there are people exactly like each other but uh, with no parental jiggery pokery but uh, unlikely unlikely if i if i saw a guy two people exactly like each other i'll say look let me find this out i'm not going to say uh, coincidence but the underlying genetic similarities between the two groups rules that out they're too close to each other they've got to have had something common alternately some scientists had suggested that the white lipped variety had simply spread over the whole continent then been wiped out everywhere beside ireland and and pyrenees that's possible they've been all over the place then they got killed elsewhere only these two are there but the researchers say their sampling and subsequent dna analysis eliminate that possibility too i don't know how they've eliminated but they've eliminated that possibility If the snails naturally colonized Ireland, you would expect to find some of the same genetic type in other areas of Europe, especially Britain. We just don't find them. And so, we're not seeing in anywhere except these two places. 
Moreover, they had gradually spread across the continent. There would be some genetic variation within the white lip type because evolution would introduce variety over thousands of years. Because evolution would introduce variety over thousands of years, it would have taken them to spread from Pyrenees to Ireland. So it went from one place to another and then disappeared in the middle. The chances are this end and that end are different. That variation doesn't exist, at least in the gene sample. They are same. And this means that rather than the organism gradually expanding its range, large populations in Chet were somehow moved en masse to the other location within the space of a few dozen generations, ensuring a lack of genetic variety. These twins are equivalent of twins in this genetic game. They were transmitted within a period of 100 years. Somebody took a bunch of these buggers from this side and put them that side. There is a very clear pattern which is difficult to explain except by involving humans, Davidson said. Humans, after all, colonized Ireland roughly 9,000 years ago and the oldest fossil evidence of gross snails in Ireland dates to roughly the same era. Additionally, there is archaeological evidence of early sea trade between the ancient peoples of Spain and Ireland via the Atlantic and even evidence that humans routinely ate these types of snails before the advent of agriculture as their burnt shells have been found in Stone Age trash heaps. Of course, this is very easy. I don't know why there's such a big build-up. That's probably the most likely explanation. Humans, for some reason, maybe they thought there was, there was some special powers they had or special medicine they had or, or God had made them sacred, something. But they took a bunch of these creatures from one end to another. The simplest explanation then, boats. These snails may have inadvertently traveled on the floor of the small coast hugging skiffs these early humans used for travel possible or they may have been intentionally carried to Ireland by the seafarers as a food source possible they good nutrition they've been treated as food before agriculture the highways of the past were rivers in the ocean as the rivers that flanks the Pyrenees was an ex ancient trade route to the Atlantic what you're actually seeing might be the long lasting legacy of snails that shitched a ride as, ride as humans traveled from south of France to Ireland 8000 years ago Quite possible, quite likely, quite clear explanation. Let's go to the question. The passage outlines several hypotheses and evidence related to white-lipped growth snails to arrive at the most convincing explanation for. What are they arriving at an explanation for? The fact that near identical genetic strands are available in two far away places. Why the white-lipped variety of gross snails were wiped out everywhere except in Ireland and Pyrenees? No, they were not wiped out. I mean, that theory is debunked. They are not finding an explanation for this. How the white-lipped variety of gross snails independently evolved in Ireland and Pyrenees? No, they did not independently evolve. The convincing explanation is they are there. Why do they happen to be identical? Why the white-lipped variety of gross snails are found only in Ireland and the Pyrenees? Yeah. How the white-lipped variety of gross snails independently evolved in Ireland and the Pyrenees? No, choice C should be the right answer. Oops. The, the same variety is available in both places. And then we are trying to find an explanation for that. All of the following evidence supports the passage's explanation of sea travel and trade, except the coincidental existence of similar trains in the white-lipped grove snails of Ireland and Pyrenees because of convergent evolution. Uh, all of the following evidence supports the passage explanation. Convergent evolution. He's saying that's not possible. This is our answer. The, let's read the other choices. He's saying convergent evolution. Like, like there's a strand in Delhi, there's a strand in Chennai. They've never been in contact with each other. But it looked, turns out that both of them took the exact same path. Convergent evolution. And very frequently, uh, convergent thought process is given as an excuse for plagiarism. Person A would have written an essay, person B has written the same essay. And then person B says, oh, what a coincidence, we both thought of it the same way. Most professors will say, yeah, good for you, but except that I'm asking you to leave this college. And so, something like that. And so, that is not given as an explanation for sea travel. If convergent evolution were there, then the sea travel theory need not be proponent. Right? Let's look at choices B, C, and D. The oldest fossil evidence of white-lipped crow snails in Ireland date back to roughly 9,000 years ago, the time when humans colonized Ireland. Yeah, this is used. 
absence of genetic variation within the white lip crow snails this is used this is what tells us that they did not move over generations and then suddenly disappear in the middle in between these two places archaeological evidence of early sea trade between ancient peoples yeah this is also used this only tells us that maybe they traveled with humans over sea a is an easy answer in paragraph 4 the evidence that humans routinely ate these types of snails before the advent of agriculture can be used to conclude that they routinely used that means they what could it be because this this, this will suggest that they not only traveled by sea they were taken by the sailors by sea for for food supply right white clipped grow snails may have inadvertently traveled from the pyrenees to ireland on the floor of small coast hugging skiffs this is true but this doesn't this is not linked to this if this were true if it is to be linked then they did not inadvertently travel they were taken as a food food source the seafarers who traveled from the pyrenees to ireland might have carried white clipped grove snails with them as edibles yes that's what this is supporting that's why this is there rivers and oceans in the stone age facilitated trade in white lip grove snails yeah but routinely ate these types of snails there has got to be an indication that they were carried for food 9000 years ago during the stone age humans traveled from the south of france to ireland via the atlantic a c and d are all true they're all stated they're all explanations of some other things but this you need are the answer choice to say maybe they took it for food that is choice b which of the following makes the author eliminate convergent evolution as a probable explanation for why white lipped crow snails are found in ireland the absence of genetic variation between white lipped crow snails of ireland and pyrenees the absence of genetic similarities between white lipped crow snails of this is just wrong first one seems reasonable we'll have to revisit it the coincidental evolution of similar traits in the growth snails of ireland no it's not saying growth i will be helping the theory of hypothesis of convergent evolution not eliminating it the distinct lineage of the white lip growth snails found specifically in ireland and the pyrenees the distinct lineage the absence of genetic variation between white lip growth and I'm, I'm 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 kind of i want to think about a and d separately the absence of genetic variation between white lip growth snails of ireland and the pyrenees very likely there is no variation at all convergent evolution even if it had been convergent evolution they cannot be identical but right? so the distinct lineage of white lip growth snails so i'm going with a because it is they're so exactly the same it's not like you found a guy in delhi another guy in chennai they look like each other they're replicas of each other copies of each other you can't tell them apart that's when you say who's the father that's exactly what the author is saying right so the the lineage is not a factor the absence of any variation that is a driver wonderful guys we've had a uh, three fabulous passages all three were tough found them very challenging and so a uh, very interesting passages i think we got two on dna because we picked across slots so i think they are they are keeping some consistency across slots as a serious uh, feature so therefore we've got uh, two on uh, on dna uh, wonderful i quite enjoyed these passages were very challenging the jargon filled the, at least now you get a feel for whether you are your condition or your uh, you have it in you to kind of fill around with those um, uh, the 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 type of passages that have heavy duty scientific jargon the two of the passages had them so if you're comfortable with scientific jargon you should go down that route else you should stay away from that and right? so i'm going to jump back and have a very quick look at the at the at our own uh, discussion board and, and, and youtube comments just for a very quick round wonderful passages tough and right? so uh so hang in there get a feel for which kind of passages work for you something adishwar has said three out of four was attempted only one correct in first passage it was jargon filled so many terms so many terminologies genetics epigenetics the detail matters so much and there's a lot of scientific guff so you probably need to stay away from that the more uh, the passage that you have a connect with day to day 
so therefore you should know what kind of passages work for you to work on that and so maybe passage selection is a very crucial skill set i'm actually pretty poor at that because i start liking some of these trickier passages because they're they they're, they're teaching you something new fine uh, bharat is very good at that he's done a couple of videos on saying how to select the best passages go through that when you're preparing prepare for all passages don't get think start thinking about selecting questions and so right now you you do the tougher passages get condition get trained when you go to the mock cat level and the exam level then you pick and choose don't start picking and choosing today there are unknown vocabs how to find the meaning of sentences it's a nightmare if you don't understand many words skip the passage i can tell you that you will find at least three passages where you can understand most of the stuff fine so and the more you read the better you get at understanding keep reading but if it's so jargon filled that it's just not comfortable then dump it don't even go near that passage usually narrow down to two options but one is un- uh, right that happens to everybody you're not an exception uh, you'll get better at this train yourself to look for detail look for some exaggeration look for something that's not mentioned in the passage the key word that is crucial keep amping that up there was a couple of selection there was one question where there was one thing which was distinction other was doing well we don't want the distinction thing because the author is laying blow after blow against merit so if you read the passage you get a hang of that the two choices are hardly millimeters apart but we still pick the uh you want to get the nuances of the passage then it becomes easier to pick get lots of practice keep reading it should fall in place should we move our lips while reading your choice completely when i'm reading intently i'm fully focused on it i i don't move my lips but that's your pick don't worry you can't obviously read out loud remember that i don't remember too many words now i'm trying to teach so i'm doing slower and i'm trying to remember passages and phrases and i've just read these passages before the class that's why i'm very comfortable with them i don't remember words much but i keep going back to the passage super guys i think we've answered a bunch of uh, simple questions the, the the most obvious ones obviously we've done a set of videos on how to prepare for vrc how to select eliminate uh, one out of the last two choices how to select the right passages all of that fine so if if that that you if you if you're mulling over those kind of questions i would suggest that you should go through the uh, the youtube questions features that are answering those and any other questions queries you might have uh, please put them in um, in comments we will uh, we will have a we will definitely try our best to answer this and someone said did not ask cat level after 2019 cat i actually found one or two of these passages to be very tough 2019 cat was tough but a couple of these passages were the tough they're not that easy and wonderful guys i'm signing off enjoy your weekend hope you have a blast stay safe stay indoors cheers then